This is Ed Bergeson, and he can tell you what the temperature was on February 10th, 1990. Yeah, it was minus 37 with a minus 10 wind chill. Because that's the day he's reminded of every time he looks down at his hands. I was lucky that time. Frostbite? Frostbite, yeah. At the same time, I'm still paying today for it. And more often than not, Ed will spend the day and sometimes the night on the street. You got to keep moving, basically, because hey, you can't just sit down because it's too cold. <laughs> but there is refuge. For the past decade, Ed and hundreds like him have used the Boyle Street warming bus. Seven days a week, it drives to areas beyond the inner city, helping keep people warm, fed, alive. Hey, do we have a home for this soup? <laughs> Last year, more than 1,300 people accessed the bus nearly 6,000 times. But this year, it's parked. $100,000 shy of the funding needed to keep it operating. Clients are concerned. It's difficult. I mean, I had a gentleman who came in just this morning to our centre and asked what's going on with the bus. Boyle Street is looking to the community and partners for a solution. We broke the news to Ed the bus may not run. His immediate concern was for others. Everybody's got to eat, and uh, I mean, when you're out in, all, in the cold weather like this all the time, you got to eat even more. Ed would like to see the bus get back on the road, but admits if it doesn't, it won't be his biggest problem. Dan Grummet, CTV News, Edmonton. Our Dan Grummet is on board for the first ride on open day. Dan. CTV's Dan Grummet in Lac La Biche. CTV's Dan Grummet joining us now with more on this. Dan. CTV's Dan Grummet joining us live from outside the Royal University Hospital in Saskatoon. Many of the Broncos players are still there recovering tonight. Dan. That's right, Daryl, and it was Friday night after the crash that many of the players and personnel were brought here, and as you mentioned, some are still here. And when their family members found out, they made their way here as quickly as they could. And besides that message to Albertans, a lot of what we heard from Justin Trudeau today, we've heard before, yesterday in Surrey, last Friday in Oshawa, with one extra wrinkle, a staunch defense of his government's purchase of the Trans Mountain expansion project. CTV's Dan Grumman, live at Taste of Edmonton tonight. And today, you basically set out to see what people like and don't like about this new location. Yeah, that's right, Daryl. We're hearing from Taste of Edmonton that based on early returns, people are preferring Capitol Plaza over Churchill Square. But we wanted to find out for ourselves, so we conducted a very formal, very scientific survey. When gauging public opinion, it doesn't hurt to offer incentives. A chair is a good start. Can we get your guys' thoughts on Taste of Edmonton? It's got to sit beside me. Can we get you to sit down with us today? No, thank you. Rejected. Food tickets work even better. Look at these. Who wouldn't want them? Okay. He's up for it. Okay, we need to put put this mic on you. Hi, Dan. Hey, how's it going? What's your I'm name? Gary. Hey, Gary. Nice to meet you. Yeah. What do you think of the new venue? Goodbye, Churchill Square. Come on in. What do you think of the new Taste of Edmonton venue? I love it. I think this venue is way better than Churchill Square. It's noon and it's not crowded, packed where you can't move, which it sometimes was in the other place. That one used to feel like you have entered a kitchen. I guess, are, are there any cons of being down here? The run hits me right now, there's no shade. What challenges have you seen this week? It's very congested there. Our guests are telling us that. What about parking? You had to park down a hill and hike up here to get here. I did, all the way down the other side of the ledge grounds. The, yeah, the main parking. man can't even get a good parking no. spot. Churchill Square was a lot easier. If you had to vote for where it would be next year? I think I'd vote for here. I like it here. Yeah. It's very nice, I like it. Consensus is one thing, reality is another. Will Taste of Edmonton be back here? There's a very high possibility. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Dan. I know you guys do this for the tickets necessarily, but... Oh, you did do it for the tickets. Okay, there you go. <laughs> and I don't have any tickets left, so that worked uh, pretty well. The Canadian Wireless Telecommunications Association says there are a number of reasons why you may not have received the Amber Alert on your phone, what type you have, the software you're using, but the big one was whether or not you're connected to an LTE network. Why not renew his contract? Well, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. I don't really want to talk about it today with the mayor's message. You can't tell me why Rod Connect is not being renewed? Sure, I'll be glad to do that tomorrow. Will the answer change between now and tomorrow, though? The glass has nowhere to go but down. Get that camera off me. Hey, did, did you think that there might have been a better way to do that? 
Why well, Allah doesn't allow it. Pardon me? Go away. Were you, were you concerned that that might hit somebody, sir? I didn't realize that actually. We own this building. Go away. Leave me alone, please. Well, sir, you can't. This, the broken glass is falling on, falling on to... I am here. done, sir. I'm done. Leave me alone. We're trying to talk to Pat Reed. Okay, was he expecting? No. Is he in? Uh, Pat is a very busy man, and he's just not available. After alerting city staff we wished to speak with Reed, the deputy city manager yeah. spoke to us. We're going to get you some information uh, tomorrow. Yeah, we knew we were going to get a written statement. Yeah, a written statement tomorrow. Yeah, we just didn't think that that really suffices. It's really not, a, really not appropriate for you guys to be up here. Why not? Because this is like a working floor of city staff. Um, so, you know, Pat's not available. Why isn't Pat available? He's doing his job. We reached out to PCL. They referred us to the owner, Ice District, which sent us a statement. It reads, we've been advised by our general contractor, PCL, a massive Canada 150 sculpture has been set up next to City Hall. It's one of 19 in cities across the country, and so far, people in Edmonton are flocking to it. The smell of this corpse flower doesn't exactly fill the air in this pyramid. There are pockets of it here and there. But in order to really get a good whiff of this plant, you got to put your nose in it. This is one of the most popular spots along the route. The Liard River Hot Springs was constructed simultaneously with the Alaskan Highway in 1942. It served as a respite for weary soldiers. And now it's an oasis for weary highway travelers.